Hey, everybody. Uh, well, we've got a great show today, you know, for a change. Uh, Melanie Sloan is with us, and you're probably thinking, oh, I don't know that name. I don't know that name, Melanie Sloan. Well, you should. You really should, because she has had her eye on corruption in Washington, D.C. for decades. And she used to actually be on my uh, radio show on Air America every week. <laughs> She had corruption in Washington to report, and a lot of that was happening in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. Melanie was, at that time, the head of Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Now, you, it's crew, and and they still exist, and they're a, a watchdog. And now she is senior advisor to another watchdog group called American Oversight. American Oversight, and this has just been her career. She um, really is doing God's work, and she knows all the ins and outs of corruption in Washington, D.C., and you know, now that I think of it, she could just use that knowledge and just go to town in the last few years of her career and make a mint. Her dream is to move to Napa and get a vineyard. And um, she's gathered all this knowledge on on corruption. And boom, you're going to see her. You go to St. Helena, California, and you'll see her uh, making a fine Chardonnay. So Melanie Sloan is coming up after this musical interlude. I am, in fact, a lawyer. Okay. How convenient. <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> okay. fine work. You've been on this beat for a long time. Yes. How, how long? Since 2003. 2003. And when I did my Air America show, we had you on every week. Every week. But you'd be on for like 10, 15 minutes and just that week's corruption, right? Exactly. But where does this administration stand in relation to other administrations. And let me guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would think somewhere in the middle. <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Hmm, I think probably not in the middle. Oh, okay. Then it's either toward the bottom or toward the top, and I'm going to say probably more suspicious activities or downright corrupt. Yeah, I don't even think you'd have to go as suspicious. It's all right out there. Yeah, but there's also suspicious. There's also suspicious. <laughs> but there's so much right right on the surface that they okay. don't even try to hide. Let's uh, categorize these. Let's go first to illegal, clear, no one, <laughs> no one could excuse this thing, obvious. Give me one of those. Well, the only problem with what you said is the no one can excuse it because there seems to be an awful lot of the you know downright corrupt, but there are people okay, who no seem one, willing to excuse it anyway. No one honest could excuse it. No one, you know, can do it with a straight face. Yeah. No. So that would probably be all of the money spent at all the Trump properties that goes straight into the pocket of the president. That gets into emoluments. And now, emoluments is from foreign people, or is it from anybody? Emoluments is largely for foreign people, but also it has been viewed. And and you know, one of the problems is there's well, no let's case Let's define law. emoluments, and this is in the Constitution, right? It's in the Constitution. And the yeah. president just can't take money, <laughs> right? <laughs> While he's president, from foreign from power. Foreign powers. Right? Okay, and so you know, he did not divest himself of his business. Right. And uh, most presidents right. have done that, right? Right. Most presidents have done that. And uh, there are laws requiring all other government officials to divest from their private holdings. And there hasn't been in the past a law requiring the president to do that, largely because it was just understood that, of course, a president would do that. And now we've seen that that is so, not the so case. Congress had always assumed that the president wouldn't do that. And you know what they say 
when you assume you make an ass out of Uma Thurman. I doubt she sees it that way. <laughs> I have not run that by Uma, <laughs> and probably I won't. <laughs> so, so, so in other words, you're from a foreign uh, country. Say, I'll just pick one out of the air. There's so many foreign countries. Uh, Saudi Arabia. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's not a good example. Diplomats from Saudi Arabia, they come to Washington and they go like, <sighs> La Quinta, the La Quinta in um, McLean, or should we really just splurge? Because we're Saudi Arabia. We have so much oil and wealth, and the royal family is very wealthy. We're going to stay at a top-end hotel. And someone says, well, why don't we say it at the Trump? What's it called? The Trump Tower? Trump International. Trump International. Because he wants international <laughs> leaders and diplomats to stay there. And, and, and they go there. Is that Oh, what they happens? do, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, is this illegal? Is it illegal? It is illegal if money from foreign governments go into the pocket of the president and the Trump organization um, is paid by Saudi Arabia and all of it's a privately held family company. And so the money goes into Trump's pocket. So, yes, it's illegal. It's illegal because of the emoluments clause. clause right. So is it illegal or is it unconstitutional or what? What do you what do you is that impeachable? Is what is that? All it of is the above? all of the above. Uh -huh. It is unconstitutional and it is uh, impeachable and illegal if it violates the Constitution. The problem is that it's unclear who can enforce such a law, this part of the Constitution. And uh, so far, the courts have not been willing to accept uh, cases. Uh, they've been dismissing the cases. Well, about this. yeah, you know, the courts decide, right? Right. You can't get a court to take that. How far has it gone? How far has it gone, the emoluments? I think there was a court of appeals decision saying... A circuit court. A circuit court saying that the case yeah. couldn't go forward. There are still a couple of other cases out there. I don't think all of the cases but are But it gone. got to a circuit court, which meant a lower court said... It could proceed. It could proceed. Okay. And how many of these properties does he have that people who want to influence the, the administration, how many of those does he have? Does the family have? There are some they own outright and some that they have their names on um, that, you know, we know, obviously, here in, in the States, the ones he talks about the most are the Trump International Hotel, the Bedminster Golf Course in New Jersey. Uh, there's a golf course in Virginia. There is Trump Doral in Florida. Right. Um, and which which uh, that's where we're going to have the G7. Well, if everybody will agree to go, that's certainly where he would like to have the G7. Yeah, or if he has his way, also the G8. Right, of course, if Russia of course, is, yeah. is admitted in. Yeah. Now, I have a question. You said that some of them just kind of have his name on right. it. So that, those are like a branding thing. Yeah. And he gets paid for that. Right. You know, use your name, Trump. Yeah. And there have been places that have taken his name off. There's been some big fights about taking his name off buildings. I wonder... If someone in the debates, you know, next fall, could ask him how you build a building, you know? I mean, in other words, could ask him some technical <laughs> questions about building. I, I wonder if uh, he knows anything about it. I don't know. I, I know that the kids are involved in um, meetings to negotiate the property deals and even to design. I think I've read that Ivanka Trump has been very involved in the design of the interiors of some of the hotels. She's uh, a fond of gold. Seems the family She loves is only fine. gold. Gold leaf. Yeah, very fond of that. Yeah. Uh, see, the emoluments thing, not evidently clearly illegal. In your mind, clearly illegal. Well, I want clearly Ill illegal. Right. What What has been clearly illegal? It doesn't have to be Trump, but in this administration, which is because it seems to my eye and pretty much everyone, I think, that this there's just a lot of corruption. Sure. Well, obstructing justice. 
That's clearly illegal. Okay, well, that's the one where we're trying to uh, get witnesses that the administration is blocking us. Right. From. So there, you know, in addition to the question of the firing of the former FBI director, Jim Comey, uh, in order to try and stop the Russia investigation. And the, and the repeated attempts to fire Mueller. Right. And the repeated attempts to fire Mueller. And, the, <laughs> and then there's also the dangling of pardons to others if they don't cooperate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems uh, really bad. That seems like a really illegal thing, which is I may pardon you if you shut up. Wink, wink. I mean, it has to be the wink has to be there. and You can't actually say the first part. Right. I think he's, you know, in some tweets suggested that he would pardon people who didn't cooperate. Yeah. Okay. Maybe there was we'll... a lot of criticism about that and other, you know, legal commentators. Okay, what's that called? What's that crime called? Well, uh, I guess it sort of depends. It could be a sort of a host of crimes. It could be um, obstruction of justice if you try mm-hmm. to stop them from talking. Um, it could be bribery. You're offering them something in exchange for something else. Mm-hmm. That seems illegal, but it hasn't been proven. It just hasn't been proven. They haven't haven't gone through the courts. And they're trying to stop it every way they can. And we had a a podcast that I did a few months ago with Dahlia Lithwick and Matt Miller. And we were discussing whether to go to an impeachment inquiry. And my argument was, if you're going to do it, do it now. Because already I'm hearing people going like, well, too late. Because if you do it now, it'll run into the election and it'll be the biggest issue in the election. And we've actually got so many other issues like health care, which helped us win 40 seats. So do you think they should be doing impeachment? I think, you know, the best time to plant a tree is now. But we should have done it when I said (laughs) because if you plan it now, I I think it'll, that's exactly what would happen. I don't think there's any way around it. Now, I think they can do an impeachment inquiry, which gets them in the front of the line, I guess, for having the courts to say, yes, these witnesses have to testify. I mean, the truth is there might be so many more illegal things that we don't know, particularly because Trump doesn't release his tax returns. What committee is supposed to be able to get the president's Tax right. forms. Uh, that's Ways and Means. Okay. Richard Neal is the chair. Okay. That's just... That's in, in court. That's right. in statute. Yeah. But I think that goes back a little bit further. Oh, right, right. Why, why, why don't these courts go like, pretty important, pretty important here, getting the president of the United States taxes. Let's do this... Expeditiously. Good. Expeditious. That's a lawyer. Term. It is a lawyer word. Very good. I like <laughs> God, that. I could throw one in. <laughs> yeah. No, no. That was excellent. I'm going to write that down and use it in some later podcast. Okay. So I think there's just an amazing amount of legal corruption in this town. And that really hasn't been of interest to you, has it? I mean, it, it, I'm sure it's of interest, but it isn't what you do. It isn't your work. Well, for many years, some of that really was my work. A lot of the campaign finance stuff that is that we barely even talk about nowadays because the levels of corruption are so much higher um, in these other areas. But for many years, I talked a lot about the pay to play nature of Washington. One of the ways that you would see it most evidently, for example, was if you were on the agriculture committee, you would have lots of donations from agribusiness. And if you were on uh, armed services. Yeah, but, but that would be like a guy from like a farm state or a woman from a farm state. And of course, they would support ag, agribusiness. Well, they're not always people from I and I, I wasn't <laughs> picking on you from Minnesota for being from a farm state. Well, Armed no, services. I, uh, no, also, I, didn't, I didn't really get on uh, agribusiness. Um, uh, I was uh, being facetious. Okay. Yeah. If you were defense appropriations, you got a ton of money from defense contractors. Sure. And when people would say, well, there's, you know, there's no relationship. But, you know, the minute you'd step off that committee, suddenly those donations would dry up. So there was obviously a strong connection. Okay. Between... Well, that's campaign finance. And then, of course, Citizens United made that exponentially worse because now it was basically 
You could do dark, dark money. money, the dark right. money. And the, I remember uh, so after Citizens United, that decision, I guess that was 2010. So in 2012, I was listening to NPR, and uh, they had some expert on campaign finance. And she said uh, something like, well, it's been kind of surprising that there hasn't been that much corporate money. And whoever was interviewing her said, do we really know that? And she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going like, that's the whole friggin' point. Right. The dark money doesn't have to be reported. Right. And also, just because it's not reported to the FEC so that Americans can know about it when they're considering their vote doesn't mean that the person who benefited from all that money doesn't know. So they may well be carrying water for that corporation. Well, they can't coordinate, so they can't tell him or her. But the truth is, everybody knows this lack of coordination is a total fiction. And who's supposed to be enforcing? This? Well, the FEC. The FEC, which you know hasn't been enforcing anything in well, more than a decade anyway. And now it's with only three members. It literally cannot enforce anything. Okay, so um, who is in charge <laughs> <laughs> At the FEC, really, there is nobody in charge. The FEC is just ba- a non. Well, someone right now. must be in charge. Someone must say, "We need how many more members do they need?" The FEC has six members. Um, Normally, but now three. But now three. Okay, yeah, that's typical of this. Right. This time, yeah. They're supposed to be split evenly between the parties. I see. Yeah. Well, of course, six, three, three. Right. Which is right. why it also doesn't work because if you've got three and three, so they block it. It wasn't McGahn. He was head of yeah. the FEC. Yeah. And he just stopped everything, right? He killed everything. He was the worst thing that ever happened to the FEC. And that's, of course, why he became the president's White House counsel. <laughs> <laughs> McConnell has never had any interest in putting more members on the FEC because he likes it not functioning. He's against having an FEC. He's against campaign finance regulations. But it used to be for them, right? A long, long, long time ago. Whoa, 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 whoa. He was for transparency. Yeah, but he's not anymore. That's right, because he said sunshine is the greatest disinfectant during McCain-Feingold. Right. So after Citizens United, you know, we tried to pass the Disclose, the Disclose Act. Act, which would make everybody disclose. And then suddenly, sunshine wasn't the greatest disinfectant. Right. I don't even think he really explained that. Just his views had changed. Yeah. Here's other legal corruption. That happens in this town, no matter who's president. And I saw this. I fought the Comcast-NBC merger, and the FCC voted to approve it. And there was a woman who voted in that, who a couple months later ended up working for Comcast. Perfectly legal, right? Yeah, not unusual at all. No. A revolving door. And that's uh, the defense industry. If you're in the military, my God. Oh, yeah. The generals in particular, very high demand on the boards of uh, defense contractors. Okay. I got it. You know, John Kelly, after he left the White House, uh, has become a board member for a private prison. And private prisons are one of the industries that have benefited hugely under President Trump because they were being phased out under President Obama and uh, they spent a lot of money on the inauguration, and they've spent a lot of money at Trump properties. And suddenly, uh, private prisons have gotten lots of lucrative contracts. And John Kelly, when he left the White House, ended up on the board of one of them. And a lot of people will think, okay, private prisons must be nice. They're private. I mean, and this is the Trump administration. It must be Ivanka must go in there and say, let's put some gold leaf here. But it's not like that at all, is it? No, because they run the immigrant detention centers, which, as we know, Trump has no interest in making be nice at all. They had, a, they had, there was a case eight months ago, six, seven, uh, maybe even longer, where the Trump Justice Department argued that people in these prisons or in these camps were not entitled to mattresses and we're not entitled to soap these were actually kids they were talking about kids weren't entitled to soap and toothpaste i i think it was everybody and then and 
us liberals just went kids because <laughs> kids are a subset of everybody. Well, kids, I think it was kids because there's something called the Flores Settlement that they were arguing about. And the Flores Settlement was particularly about how you treat immigrant minors. OK, these private prisons are especially pernicious. Right. I mean, they are obscene. Agreed. And people should be tried. And I mean, it's unbelievable. And it is cr- it is unbelievably cruel. I, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And I know there's a lot of money there. And um, money talks. Yep. Their stock, stock prices have gone up. Okay. And that's legal. That's legal. We have this system here that is just, <laughs> but but you you know when 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 we talked, you said that this is clearly the worst administration since Harding. Yeah, right. Okay, since now T-Pod prove Hill. that to me. Prove, make that case because when I a lot of what we've talked about is just your garden variety, um, you know, the government being captured by interests that have a, that have a lot of money and uh, citizens united complicated that tremendously as we talked about so make the case make the case that uh, this is uh, incredible i mean i don't buy it i don't buy the the trump uh the trump administration is more corrupt that's a straw man <laughs> a straw man you know, even with other presidents, even when we were looking at all the problems in the Bush administration, for example, there was not a single allegation that President Bush was personally profiting. He did have a brother who was, uh, Neil Bush, but that was separate. There often presidents seem to have brothers who are problematic. Neil Bush, I mean, he had really this very funny thing in the Bush administration where he managed to get the education department to give grants for people to buy these televisions that had cows on the outside of them that were supposed to be used in schools for videos. Just think that's the level of corruption we're talking about in the Bush administration. And then we're thinking about Vice President Pence staying at a hotel two hours outside of Dublin so that the money can go into the president's pocket instead of staying at a Dublin that hotel. That was weird. Yeah. That was weird. So explain that. Yeah, I, so, I think everybody, you know, there's so much that goes by us, so much weird shit. You know, there's not one thing every day. There's now two, three, four things every day. And then one of them was Pence goes to Dublin and instead of staying at a hotel in Dublin. Right. He stays at, is this a golf course club? Yeah, a golf club called the, the Dunebeg the Trump International Golf Club in Dunebeg. He has to fly and take a car to get into his meetings Did in Dublin. Did he have to take a helicopter? Is that what he had I think to he'd take? take a helicopter and then a car. It was like a two and a half hour trip. That was what the Times was reporting. Okay. Is Pence like, that's relaxing downtime for me? Well, it's two each, that each way. So that's, you know, basically five hours of travel time to get I, to That's when meetings. I listen to my podcasts. Yeah. Well... I don't know what the vice president was doing, but his um, his chief of staff, um, when asked if the president had told Pence to stay there, um, he said he had suggested it, mm-hmm. recommended it. He didn't insist, but yeah, Vice President Pence, as we know, is accommodating. He does seem to be uh, accommodating. He does stand behind the president a lot, and does uh, nothing. And he spends a lot of money at Trump properties. He has his own PAC called the Great America Committee, and it's reported spending uh, about $225,000 at the Trump International Hotel next to the White House. Wait, well, okay, so the vice president's PAC, which is uh, his PAC. Right. Uh, and then people donate to his PAC, and then he has staff in the PAC who yep. runs the PAC, and they have spent 200 and some thousand dollars. If everyone just gets like a chef salad or something like that, that's a lot of money. Have you ever stayed at really one of those high-end hotels? They do, they do charge a lot for food. They do. And drinks. Very expensive. So that should be, you should, you know, take that into account. Yeah. Because that's expensive. I don't know how much the rooms are. And some of them will buy the bathrobe, you know. 
It's it's tempting. I'm sure it's a nice bathrobe. You get out of the shower, you go, you know what? I'm a little cold. I'm going to put on this bathrobe. Oh, this is nice. I haven't actually owned a bathrobe. And now I I could just have the pack pay for it. Have the pack pay for it. <laughs> right? You know, the Trump campaign has also spent money at Trump hotels. So Trump's own campaign spends money at the hotel. Now, one of the fraudulent things, of course, was I love that your foundation is corrupt. Right. That's fabulous. So corrupt it had to be shut down. Yes. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. A corrupt foundation. Of course, in the 16 campaign, he went after the Clinton Foundation, which has saved, I don't know, millions of lives fighting AIDS. And he went after that. And his <laughs> his foundation had to be closed down because it, like, bought his portrait. He gave no money to it. And then it would, uh, oh, he got a man of the year thing from the police down uh, whatever town, Palm Beach police or something. And they did a uh, ceremony, you know, did a dinner for him at Merrill Arc. <laughs> Yeah, I think he used even the little foundation money that he did have. I think they used it improperly, um, spending money on non, non-foundation non related expenses. The New York Attorney General went after them pretty hard, and they eventually had to shut it down. Okay, that that's corrupt, but th- it's not illegal? I no, mean- that is illegal. Is it necessarily? It could be criminal, um, but it violated tax law. I see. So what's the difference between illegal and criminal? I should know that. Uh, obviously, criminal is something you could like go to jail for, right? Right. And illegal is something that you get a, a fine. Uh, fines, or something. yeah. So criminal basically means something that you could um, be imprisoned for if it's a. So civil- Manafort is a criminal. Manafort is a criminal. Uh, Cone is a criminal. A criminal. But you could have both. Oh, Flynn which, right, is right, a criminal. Right. That brings us right back to things that were. Absolutely illegal. So campaign fine. It's a good example. Is there are some campaign finance violations that are civil violations that you'll just get what fined about, for, what about, and others that are criminal. So like the whole um, Stormy Daniels thing, and the president uh, seems to have been involved in some criminal conduct in regard to the cover up with the payments to the Inquirer. And and that's in the Southern District of New York. Yeah. But when is that going to get done? Yeah, not clear. Well, they should do that. Seems pretty cut and dry, doesn't it? That does seem quite cut and dried. Yeah. I mean. They have documentary evidence. They're, they've got the tapes, the yeah. conversations. He also said he knew nothing about it, right? Right. On the plane. Yeah. Just wanted to throw that in as one of the clearer criminal things. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, so we've got a lot of everything that people look at and go like, that's corruption. And then we've got a few absolutely illegal things. So is that criminal, what he did, what, uh, paying off the porn star and then lying about it? No, but he didn't lie about it in court. You can lie all you want. I mean, thank God for him. <laughs> He's like, um, Mr. President, uh, you actually get a day in prison for every lie you tell us, President. It wasn't reported to on his FEC Yeah, that's reports. the crime. And that was the crime. That's the crime, and that's a crime. That was a felony. Okay. Yeah. Here's the thing. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming now we don't, uh, there's not going to be impeachment for the reasons I said, which is that it kind of will go right into the campaign and he'll use it as an issue. And I think that's a shame. We should have done this a long, uh, while ago. So... Is corruption going to be an issue? In past elections, it certainly has been an issue. But right now, it doesn't seem as if there could be any Americans who are not aware of the corruption. So, um, oh, come on. You know, there are I think people, they just don't care. Well, also, there are people who just get their information from, I mean, this is one from of the Breitbart things. Breitbart or. Yeah, Box. from from I mean, we divide into kind of camps in this country. It's very tribal, and uh, there's got to be 
members of his tribe that don't hear it, certainly. And, and I mean, uh, do you really think there are people at this point who don't know about the Stormy Daniels stuff? I mean, that played everywhere. And you think there are people who don't know that Trump has a hotel? Because he brags about it all the time. He wants to tell people that he's got a hotel, and he tells people oh, that yeah, people yeah. should stay there. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, that's a positive. Uh, for, Some for, people just think he's a good businessman. Why shouldn't he? Yeah, I advantages. mean, obviously, he's a self-made man. His, his father lent him a million bucks, and he's turned it into several billion. Yeah, well, we don't really know how rich he was because, again, we didn't see his tax returns. It seems like being president has definitely made him a lot of money. We, yeah, we don't know, and it's possible that because um, he was, it, ble- it seemed that he was overstating his wealth. Him overstate something? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now he's got the family now. Now Jared, right? Okay, Jared Kushner seems a little shady to me. I mean, I just have to say it, and. That's not a nice thing to say about somebody. It isn't nice. But it seems like uh, he's very close to bad people. Yeah. Is that fair to say? I think so. The Saudi ruler. Yeah. They're close. What's his name? MBS? MBS. Yeah. So basically these rulers, let's you know, these Kim Jong-uns and the... And the Brazilian president. Oh, my God. Okay. Can't forget him. They're kind of similar. Yeah. Now, yeah. does he? Uh, strong men. Do they sort of help each other out financially in in any shady way? Do they go like, uh, oh, "You scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours"? I think that when these kind of foreign uh, leaders and their entourages come to Washington, they stay at the Trump International and spend a lot of money there. Yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about. Uh, Jared's building. I'm talking about real money. I'm talking yeah. about real money. I we don't know. Uh, we well, don't know. It's not public. Mm-hmm. Like another thing that we don't know, for example, is um, when Trump run the presidency. Suddenly, uh, Trump Towers revenues went up because there was a lot of uh, apartments sold, but they were all sold to LLCs. So we don't know who bought them. Mm-hmm. So a lot of money came to the Trump family, and we don't know who who purchased. Yeah, uh, I suspect it could be Russians. Or Russia. Seems possible. It's possible. Okay, let's do the cabinet members. I mean, uh, corrupt cabinet members. I think Wilbur Ross might be top of the list. Okay, Wilbur Ross. uh, Secretary of Commerce. While he was at at the Commerce Department, he started shorting stocks, (laughs) which is very unusual. And he claimed he was just divesting by shorting. Um, And he, he made a lot of money. And at one point, the uh, Office of Government Ethics even refused to accept his financial disclosure form saying it's just too inaccurate, basically. Okay, you're shorting stocks and that's divesting? That's what he argued. <laughs> um, you know, you can't make it up, really. <laughs> and, and and he's the guy who put the uh, citizenship oh, yeah. no, uh, thing right. in, the, in the census. And lied about that. And lied about Clearly that. lied about that. So there's another crime for you because he lied to Congress. There's a violation of 18 U.S.C. 1001, um, the False Statements Act, and he clearly lied. Okay, uh, let's go to Pruitt. Because I kind of thought Pruitt <laughs> was an entertaining uh, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. My, my, uh, the one I really liked was turning on the sirens <laughs> to go to Les Diplomates or something, some restaurant, right? right? Yeah. I don't That's know. There was the, great. the cone of silence. <laughs> so. Well, then, yes, he had a, a spent a lot of money on a uh, soundproof room. Soundproof room. And he also had a lot of um, security detail that. Had now, to go does that everyone. sound shady to anybody? <laughs> it could have been. It could have been. Uh, he wanted to do a podcast. Yeah. If that just felt like woohoo, <laughs> woohoo! I'm the EPA administrator. I'm Look the at EPA. me. Whoopee! I he, can kept, go. he had extra security. He had to sit in first class oh, so that's he wouldn't right. be bothered by Be- other passengers because uh, that, on the plane. And and that's because there was some. Uh, he, he felt, Someone yelled at him once. He I felt guess. threatened. Right. So he had a security detail in first class and a lot of people he brought with him. Eventually, they, yeah, he had to go because of, there were just so many ethics scandals. There was a scandal a day around Scott Pruitt. And, and similarly, the first scandal was, is that he wouldn't release these emails, right? Oh, right, in Oklahoma. Yeah, that showed that he was uh, being financed by the oil companies, right? Yep. 
And he lied about them. To Congress, I think, right? Yes, lied in absolutely. confirmation hearing. Yeah. Lying in confirmation hearing seems to be not unusual these days. Ryan Zinke? Ryan Zinke, what was his stuff? His stuff felt like it was going into his wife going into business with people he was regulating. Yeah, Halliburton. Okay. Yeah, they wanted to... Um, they... Halliburton. <laughs> Halliburton, uh-huh. yeah. Okay, so Zinke, was it he directly went... In the business, I mean, he his wife, right? Well, was it, it? they had this very odd situation where there had been land donated to his foundation to be creating a veterans peace park, and instead he was going to let Halliburton use it instead in exchange uh, for some assistance and investment uh, with this brew pub commercial real estate thing that he had going on. So, so, so he was kind of looking at that. I want that Hickenlooper money. Exactly. That's what. He that's where he was going. Uh, so he he just left. Uh, there's many Elaine more. Chow. Now she's still there. She's still there. So there have been a couple things. First, she's uh, definitely used her position at the Department of Transportation to send a whole lot of money to Kentucky, which helps her husband, uh, Senator Mitch McConnell. Okay. Well, that's. But that's sort of you know again the not unusual kind of corruption. LBJ would have done that done right that. Okay. Um, but uh, she's allowed her family members to travel with her she's appeared with them at events uh, basically helping their business along so while she's the head of the department of transportation she's been helping chinese transportation this is transportation what do you mean chinese transportation? i mean the, the shipping she's been working on shipping issues that uh, and some people have complained that she's been actually particularly bad on maritime issues regarding american ships but has been very helpful to her family's company mm-hmm. yeah, that's bad that's, that's bad. Kind of bad yeah new york times had a front page story about a big spread okay above the fold above the fold wow okay i must be really illegal <laughs> well it just looked That's very shady. That's how I judge. Just saying it was very shady. It was that, and they had gotten a lot of, they'd used the, they'd used the Freedom of Information Act and gotten a lot of emails and found out about a meeting that she um, had arranged uh, with um, some, tra- from government officials and members of her family. Uh, and then when people were asking about it, they had to cancel it. So thank you for doing this work. I mean, when, when uh, I did my Air America show, you're on every week and we had a theme for you that I can't find. I loved it though. I know it was bad to the bone. But, 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 but it was Melanie Sloan. Yep. Melanie Sloan. Then I can't remember anything else. Yeah, I can't either, but I... You can't? No, I just remember oh, you man. singing it. it so I good. thought the show meant something to it you. Meant, it meant... I loved doing the show every week. It was a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a career. At least you're not going to run out of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, no danger. I mean, wouldn't that be great if we did? If yeah. There wasn't a need for any more government watchdog groups? I mean, it used to be we talked about congressional corruption, and now that's really off the table because we're so focused on what goes on in the administration. Can you imagine a president who comes in here and cleans up this town? It ain't going to happen, is it? Well, I get you're, you know, <laughs> uh, Scott, any, anything's going to be cleaner than what we've got now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you can be relatively, you know, clean, right? And I thought Obama. Oh, I thought Obama was very clean. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, I mean, there was, it was scandal free. His administration. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, all the stuff was going on with the uh, lobbyists and uh, uh, industry and uh, corporations. And yep. Doing business and all that stuff. But, yes. So, that yeah, it would be nice. It, it, it has been a contrast. It is a contrast. In many ways. Right. No drama Obama versus the constant drama of Trump. Yeah. That's good. I like that. No drama Obama versus, oh gosh, what can we come up with? Well, you're Somebody think you'll, of you'll this. Up, Somebody you'll... think of this. <laughs> Man, no, yeah, it, it is uh, very discouraging. I think uh, this, uh, this guy um, has made America uh, just nervous all the time, anxious. And um, made me anxious. There's just some days I don't want to read the paper. I just don't want to know. Yeah, you kind of think like, I mean, obviously, we're sort of political junkies or are political junkies, and we wouldn't be doing what we're doing if we weren't. But you can imagine there's part of me that wants to go like, you know what? 
uh, a, an incredible a hobby would be a great thing that I just get immersed in. Like urban gardening. <laughs> I've thought of that. And, 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 and do, teach kids, you know. My fantasy is to go be a wine lawyer in California, which I didn't previously know was a thing, but you could live in Napa or Sonoma and do wine law. I feel that I made a career error. Wow. <laughs> that is such a big error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, and a wine, of course there's a wine lawyer. There's a lawyer for refrigerator trucks, <laughs> you know. Well, what do you do? I, uh, I'm a refrigerator <laughs> truck lawyer. And they've done very well. <laughs> yeah. So all you law students listening. <laughs> Go to wine law. Wine law, not Groucher. Thank you, Melanie. Good, good to do this again. It was lovely to be with you. Thank yeah, you for yeah. having me. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye. bye. Well, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening. That beautiful music is by Leo Kotke, the great Leo Kotke. I want to thank Peter Ogburn for producing this podcast. We'll talk again next week.